Praise the Lord for allowing us to be here uh, on this Lord's Day. We are in the house of the Lord. We continue our study on the family. And uh, as we said last week, we are focusing our attention for uh, the next few studies. We will be looking at um, the habits of black men or the hard truth, hard truth in regards to black men. And I think uh, we'll be looking at hard truth in regards to black women um, in some upcoming study also. So that's what we are dealing with. Uh, let us bow heads in prayer. Eternal Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here as we congregate today in our discussion and our study on the family, the ma marriage, husband and wife relationship. We pray that your presence will be with us. You'll bless us with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Let unity prevail in the midst of your people. Help us to apply ourselves to learn and to improve, O oh God, on our living. We ask these favors in Jesus' precious, wonderful name. Praise the Lord. Amen. So last week, uh, just to recap on some of the things that we talked about last week, uh, we were talking about uh, what things that um, black women are saying about black men. And one of the things that they said is that um, black men are, are notorious for um, running out on their family and not supporting their kids and running out of their family. And we asked the question, what is the answer to that? How can we solve that? And uh, according to what um, Elder Lewis said, that um, it, it will help if um, some of our ladies will be more careful in the men that they choose. And, you know, and we talk about you know, leaving, saving sex for marriage. We talk about that. And all of those different kind of issues we go into. I'm not, I can't really tell you everything that we talk about. I'm only giving you a, a highlight of what we talk about in that area. So that was a very lively discussion that we have last week. Also, we, we touched on the, po the point where um, the black ladies are saying that our men don't listen. They say we are not good listeners. And we don't listen to what they have to say. And we um, address that, that we're supposed to listen to um, our spouse, listen to our wives, um, consult them on whatever decision we're about to make. We get into detail about that also. Also, we talk about um, sarcasm. Men who use um, sarcastic comments towards their wife, you know, because of the fact that they want to hide and they don't want to discuss issues that is at hand, they will use sarcastic comment. For instance, men will say, well, oh, it's that time of the month, and uh, she's in her mood, and we use all of these comments, and as we said last week, those kind of uh, comments are not appreciated. We should not say that to um, the ladies in our, in our lives, because it's, it's not a good thing to say to them. So, you know, we have to back off from saying things like that. Okay, so what we're going to pick up on today, we, um, we'll be talking about the macho-ness in our men. Most of our men think that they are macho, and our ladies are saying that um, the black men think that he is macho, and uh, a number of men uh, commend that to, uh, to validate or to use emotional language to support their woman is unmanly. So what uh, these ladies are saying is that um, our men think that if they support their ladies emotionally, if you show empathy towards women, it makes you um, unmanly or not manly. You're, it more or less like you lose your macho-ness, and uh, that, should be, that should not be the case. Um, you know, if a woman is relating something to you or your wife is relating something to you, we should really give them our attention and uh, we should um, show them that we are interested and uh, give them uh, moral support, support them morally. But some men think that, you know, if they um, throw their support behind uh, their woman, that makes them not being macho. It makes them unmanly. And they will go on to say, you're trying to make us into wusses. Some men think that they, they, their wives trying to make them into wusses. You know? <laughs> a 
it, eh? Well, <laughs> it means that you are soft. You're not, <laughs> you're, you're, you're not tough. Yeah, 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 well, girly, that, that could be another one. And Pardon? Soft head. It means that um, what they say is that the woman is trying to make them into wusses and try to get them to be soft. And the, the men, what they're saying is that their job is to be macho, macho man, you know, and to be strong. So you are trying to make us into wusses. You know, I know some women try to reshape their man and they try to, you know, make them into the way that they want them to be in. But a man will always be a man. And as we all know, it's not a good thing to try to change a man. There's some things about a man that you really can't change as a woman. You know, you could try to um, mold him and, you know, try to get him to change certain ways. But there are certain things about men that nobody can change them because that is what makes them men. You know, and uh, ladies, some ladies have to understand that a man is not going to be like your girlfriend. You can't make a man to become like one of your girlfriends. And, uh, you know, it, it won't happen. So there are certain things that, you know, will not you can't really change about a man, and there are some things that you, you're able to uh, make improvement on. But we as men, we have to be willing to listen and willing to, um, to change. Um, a number of men say they believe that the role of a man is to be strong. So therefore, some of us, we think that we're supposed to be strong, and we're not supposed to um, show no kind of um, uh, emotion. We're not supposed to um, give this kind of um, emotional support. It makes us unmanly, but that should not be the case. All right. Problem solving. Or problem having, uh, uh, problem have to be solved. Problem have to be solved. Okay, that's the issue. These men think that the main reason for communication is to share facts that they can be used for problem solving. So this kind of man think that the only time that they need to talk to their wives is when they have a problem to solve. If you don't have nothing important to talk about, you're not talking to your wife. You only talk to your wife or you only talk to um, the woman in your life if you have something important to say. Because some of us, we think, well, you know, women talk too much. I'm not going to carry on no extra conversation because the more you talk to them is the more they talk. So therefore, they, uh, they, 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 uh, as little as much talking you do with them, it's better for you. And some men, you know, think that way. But that is not right. You can't just um, expect to have conversation with your wife when you have something important to say to her. You know, you have to be there to talk to them all the time. And some, some men are, are, are putting it across that way. And this is what, uh, and what these sayings that I'm giving you here, it's things that ladies are saying. It's, it's things that ladies are saying. So um, we don't just talk when we have important things to talk about. They think that venting and sharing feelings get you nowhere and that if their partner is not willing to initiate problem solving, then she is being self-indulged and wasting everyone's time and energy. So if what they're talking about, if the, the things that they want to discuss, if it's not problem solving, if it's not important things, they think you're just wasting their time. You know, and a lot of us as men, we act that way. Even though we don't say to um, our wives, we act in that kind of way. You know, even at times, maybe I might not say to my wife, but sometimes she's saying something to me, oh, and I might probably might just roll my eyes like that. And I might even say, oh, I hear that already, and stuff like that. And it's not just me. I know a lot of us as men, because ladies tend to repeat things. And uh, when they're giving you a story, they tend to take the long way to China. And we as men, we're more in interested in facts. And we want to cut right to the chase and say what we have to say. But uh, ladies are different. And they have to give you all the whole full story. They have to go the, the whole nitty gritty of the story. And a lot of us as men, we are not um, prepared to, um, to, to listen. But we have to compromise. And that is how these ladies are. And 
when they're relating something to us, we have to be patient and submit ourselves to listen, to hear what they have to say. In other words, or if we don't listen, it will backfire on us. And here how it's going to backfire. So this, this, this person here in particular only want to talk when they have important things to talk about. And, you know, um, problem uh, solving. Uh, let me read that over again. They think that venting and sharing feelings get you nowhere and that if their partner is not willing to initiate problem solving, then she is being self-indulged and wasting everybody's time and energy. When he jump in with problem solving, she either uh, escalate the emotion which she believe is not heard or she withdrawn. So if you're not listening to her and you're not talking with her, unless you have important things to talk about, what uh, this person is saying here, after a while, when you have your important thing, the thing that you continue, consider to be important to talk about and you're ready to talk about it, she's going to ignore you. She's going to bring up that same emotional thing that you don't want to hear about. She's going to jump on that. Or if she don't jump on that, she'll just escape or just totally ignore you. So whatever important thing that you tell yourself you want to talk about, she's not going to listen to you. So what we have to do, we have to compromise. We have to listen to them. We have to, I'm not saying all the time we will be able to take some of the things that they're saying, but you have to show some interest that you are interested in what they're saying. So when you have your um, problem solving um, things, they will give us, um, you know, um, a listening ear. All right. Here are some of the common complaints men had about their partners. Conversational style. Women talk too much. How many men here think that your wife talk too much? Anybody here think that your wife talk too much? Huh? You, <laughs> you, you said that because your wife not here. <laughs> but, pardon me? Yes. Uh, give her the mic. Give her the mic. Let me hear what she had to say. Well, well, if a relationship is all about communication mm -hmm. and the men don't talk, mm -hmm. we can't just sit there like mouse and just squeak. We have to say something or else there, will, will, there won't be any conversation at all. You got to get them talking. So the ladies have to start the conversation, or right. else the men will just sit around or watch TV or be on the computer or do whatever. There won't be any communication in the marriage. So obviously somebody has to start the conversation. And, and if we have to take the prompt for doing it, we gladly take it. Okay. Well, uh, um, I don't think we mind you talking, but I think what some men are talking about is the unnecessary talking. You know, if you're talking unnecessary, and if you, you know, like things that are not important, like sometimes you, <laughs> sometimes you find some ladies, you know, everything that happened on the job with their um, girlfriends, you know, they want to bring it and they want to talk about it at home. Some men, most men don't really want to hear a lot about, you know, little um, petty conversation that goes on between you and your girlfriend. Some men might be interested in that, but a lot of macho men, they don't really concern about what happened between you and your girlfriend, except if, it, if it's something that is really important. But little, you know, daily conversation, whatever happened on the job, most men are not interested in that. You know? What is this, sis? Cock your ears. <laughs> <laughs> but Pastor Duncan, yes. um, to the women, men might think it's unnecessary chattering, but to women, all these stuff are important. They want to uh, make the guys involved in everything. It's right. just not what they think is important. It's important to them, so they're supposed to listen. Well, that's the thing. That's, that's what I was trying to say before. Um, men think that the only time they want to talk is when they have something important to talk about. And the woman thinks that anything that, you know, emotional and really concern her, she wants to talk about it with her man. 
And uh, he'd already prepared to hear some of these things that he considered to be petty. And uh, when he turned her off and, she don't listen, and he don't listen to what he considered to be petty, when the time come for him to um, talk to her about these things that he considered to be real important, she won't get, give him the time of, the, of day. So that's why we're saying that it had to be, there, there had to be some kind of a compromising. You know, um, sometimes you might, as, uh, you ought to just listen. And uh, sometimes it might be when you want to sleep, you just listen to they just fall asleep. You know? And you might fall asleep and leave all there talking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. The, the thing I don't understand, right, with men. If you put a group of men together, then they'll talk forever. Right? You put a group of men together, they will talk forever. They will talk about whatever they want to talk about. And then they'll say that women love to talk. Mm -hmm. But why would they talk about all they have to talk about together? Especially if they're drinking or whatever. They go to a shop or... And they will spend the whole day talking. Mm -hmm. But, you know, just talking about random stuff. So why can't they bring up random stuff to talk about with their partner, with, with a woman, the same way. So I don't understand why they try to say, okay, the woman talk too much, when they themselves, if they are in a group, they will speak. So why not bring up the same conversation to make it interesting for, for the ladies to listen? I don't think it, it's, not, it's not manly. It's not manly to a man to hear a woman say to him that he talks too much. You know, if a woman say to a man, hey, that man, he talks so much, it, it's, it, it's, a, it's a real shame on a man to hear a woman saying that he talks too much. You know, so I guess a, a man, as you said, a man might, be, he might most spill his guts or talk a lot when he in the company of other men. But when he's in the company of women, he's not that. He's not that way. But I understand what you guys are saying. With your wife, with your wife, you, you know, you should be free. You should be free to talk, you know, and, uh, you know, you should be free to share and to, to make sure that um, communication goes. Because communication can't just be when you have important things to talk about. Um, I think um, what Aryan was saying is true, but at the same time, when men gather together and they talk, it's mostly stuff that um, they don't want to share with their wife. It's stuff that they don't want to share with their wife. It's man stuff. And, and, some of these, and some of these stuff that they discuss are pretty much more shady. Let's say if um, one guy has a, a girl on the side and they talk about that girl and all that stuff. You know, that's all man stuff. They don't want to share that with their spouse or with their partner. Well, he, he, he's right. Uh, yeah? He's, he's right. He's, he's, what he said is true. Because where I work, with, with my guys, them, they talk about all these things. And one of my famous comments, I will say, listen, I know Jesus is not in this place, so I'm leaving. And because they, they, they always have something to talk about. Something about, you know, some kind of pornographic thing to talk about. You know, that's how men think. You know, and uh, he's right, you know, in, in, in saying that. But even though that's the case, when you come with your wife, you know, when you're with your wife, you should, you should be talking. You can't allow that to, to silence you and make you into a dummy. When you're at home, you, have, you can't be a dummy because when you're home, it, it has to be different. To when you're on the job, you know. I don't accept it. You know. All right. Um, well, it, it gotta it gotta work both ways, the um, elder, because if you wanna tell her something is tight and to take it off, and she find that because just like how you think that um, she represents you in public, you represent she too. Because if she find that you're wearing that, and she might say, well, you know, when you go to church, everybody see him wearing that one slippers. And he making you make look bad, and it also makes she look bad. So that's, what, that's, that's, that's how she's looking at it. Yes, but what I'm, what I'm saying, I'm explaining, I'm telling her, that um, this is, is comfortable now in the summer for me to wear. 
Well, maybe you need to buy a different color one. <laughs> All right. Men, okay, let's move on. Men, men assume, men assume, men assume, okay, men assume they heard it all before. That's the reason why some of us don't want to listen. Oh, I hear that conversation before. I hear you talk about that before. So, you know, I hear that so many times uh, that I don't really want to hear it again. They feel their partner are yelling or nagging them about something. And a lot of times we use yelling and nagging as an excuse because we don't want to talk. Although a lot of women nag and a lot of, a lot of them yell. But I know some men, because of the fact that they don't want to talk, they will always say, oh, anytime you're talking, you're yelling. Or anytime you're talking, you're only nagging me. And just to get themselves from talking. And that is not right. Uh, you know, if a woman is nagging, she needs to stop. But we as men, we can't use that as an excuse for not talking with our um, spouse. We have to talk to them. But if they are nagging, the nagging need to um, cut out. And we'll deal with nagging at a, a, a later date. I guess when we're dealing with the women, we'll deal with that. The topic at hand is really not, the, not that interested. In other words, the man is saying, well, the topic that you're talking about is not interested. I'm not, I'm not interested in it. And that's, that's a bad thing. That's a bad thing to say to a wife. And even though you don't say it, even though you, you speak by your body language, it's bad. It's a bad impression to make on your spouse. They're talking with you and you're sure that you don't, you're not interested. Or simply, uh, <laughs> there are more pressing matters to attend to. You say, well, I have more pressing things to talk, to talk about or to do. And you totally ignore them. All right. Black men don't have goals. This is what our black women are saying. They said that a lot of black men don't have goals. Uh, no dreams and ambition. And they have a point there. There's a lot of black guys out there, especially the young ones, the younger ones. They don't have any goals. They don't have no, uh, that, you know, ambition. Especially where family is concerned. Go ahead. Um, probably um, that women are looking for is not um, the kind of goal that the individual set out because the individual can set out a goal that is negative but it's a goal you see well they're not talking about negative negative things they're talking about things that will make a man a family man a responsible man those are the goals that they're talking about okay a, okay then the, the the man can have a goal but it's um in Gaining things that are contrary to principle. He could go and steal. He could no, well, I don't think they're talking about that. Okay. They're, not, they're, not, they're not talking about that. They're talking about, they're talking about good goals. They're talking about goals that will make a man a man. Like goals like you want to get a good education. Like goals that you want to have a family. You want to get married and you want to, um, you're saving to, to buy a house. And these kind of things. Those are the goals that they're talking about. They're not talking about you have a goal to become the biggest drug dealer in the district. Those are not the kind of goals that they're talking about. They're talking about goal that will make a, 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 a man a family man. And uh, we, need, we need more people out there. We need more young men out there with goals. And uh, I, I tend to, I, I agree with what they're saying. You know, I remember in, in my time, my goal was to, you know, have a wife have three kids, I want to have a house, and stuff like that. And, you know, I want to be working, so by the time I reach 40, I, I, my wife would tell you that, by the time I reach 40, I have the plan was to retire. That never happened. <laughs> but I have a goal. And uh, I think that ladies, although you guys saying that these guys don't have goal, you, when a guy coming around you, when a guy tracking you down, as we say, we, you know, you're accustomed to saying, a guy tracking you, that's one of the first things you should find out from him. What is your goal? What, what goal you have in life? What do you want to be in life? You know, he starts telling you, you know, I want to be a basketball player. I want to be a rapper. Those are not goals. I want to be a rapper. That, that, these things are, are, are side things. If he tell you, well, I want, to, I want to become a career person. I want to become an engineer. I'm studying in school so that I can become an engineer or an architect or 
you know, a skilled carpenter or a skilled mason or something like that. You know, those are our goals that we're supposed to have. But most, most uh, are the young people, the young men in our community. All they're talking about is to become a basketball star or they want to become some rapper. Or not, not, not every black man is going to make it as a basketball star. And not every black man is going to make it as a rapper. You don't have enough room out there for all young men to become rappers. So they had, they had to get interested in other things. And uh, when a man coming around you, you got to find out what kind of goals he has. And if you don't have no goals, especially where family is concerned, you don't have no intention to start saving and to, you know, build himself up. You know, start to think about in the future getting married and having a family and having a house and stuff like that. You have to shoot that guy away. But still, with all of those uh, roadblocks and all of those hindrances, we have more opportunities today for young people than when we were growing up. There is more opportunities. I know there's a lot more roadblocks that they have to deal with today, but they have more opportunities today. And what they're saying is that um, most young people are not interested in trades. They're not interested in being a, a carpenter or being a plumber. You know, uh, if you have a, a plumbing job at home to do and you call a plumber, for him to show up at your door, just for him to show up there is $90. Without he touching anything or doing anything, just to show up there is $90. And uh, young people don't want, they don't want that, that kind of trade. They don't want those kind of skills. Go ahead. I think, right? Like if you have a goal, if you set a goal as a young person, even if you don't get to go where you want to go, you start in something. You start off somewhere, mm. and then you build yourself up from there. But many young people today, if they don't get the high jobs, they figure everything else is low, mm -hmm. and they don't want to start anywhere. You know, they, they don't want to do the jobs that they consider to be a lower, you know, a lower paid or a lower case job. Yes. So that's why a lot of the black men, they want fast money. So mm -hmm. they want to go into these kind of careers where they can make fast money. I understand what um, Brother Lewis was saying with the system, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, no, I'm not saying mediocre, right? But at least start off somewhere, save up some money, and then maybe go back to get the level at what you want to, to become. You see, what we have to understand, it doesn't matter how good they make things in society. Things will not become level. The playing field will not become level, especially where us as black people is concerned. It's, nev it's never going to become level uh, for us, where it become equal and come, become easy for us to make it in life. And we have, to, we have to persevere. We have to press. We have to fight. We have to, we have to experience a lot of hardship. We have to do what we have to do so that we could get where we, where we want to go. And, uh, you know, hardship is going to remain here forever. And uh, we can't allow what the elder said is true, is correct, but we still can't allow these things to hinder us from moving forward. It's like people talk about, oh man, I can't make it in life, there's too much racist people out there. You know, white people are so racist. Man, as long as the world continues to exist, you're going to have white people, you're going to have black people, you're going to have racism. But we have to, we have to live. We, we have to live with these things. And we can't, I personally, I'm not allowing racist people to slow me down. Racist people are not going to slow me down. I'm not going to slow down because somebody decides to be racist against me. And I say, oh, you know, I just give up because, you know, too much of racist people out there. No, man. You know, I'm not going to let that slow me down. And we can't. And, and we, we, we have to be strong. And uh, in spite of the fact that it's hard where society is concerned, whatever opportunity is out there, we have to take it. We have to encourage our young people, encourage our sons and our daughters to take it. Take the, the, the little, as the sister was saying, start from the lowest um, stage and you, you build yourself up. But a lot of people just want to become multimillionaire overnight and they want to get it easy because some of these um, rappers and TV, because that they, they start in the hood and they make a little rap song and then they go to the number one and they get millions of dollars. Some of these guys out there think that, you know, that's going to happen to all of them. But that's not the case. 
you know, they have to stay in school, they have to try to get a good education, they have to decide to work hard. And I know it's hard in this um, society, but anybody who have a mind to work hard, and you're honest and you want to work hard, you can make it. You can make it, but some of these people are lazy. One more point, a short point. Um, what happen, what's happening today in this society is that if, if these, according to the news, um, a lot of the elderly, they, they don't have, they can't save towards pension because mm. they have to end up taking their money and, you know, take care of the, the children who, who um, don't want to go out to work, mm. you know. So that is just for us as young people to consider that, for young people to consider that we need to do something to help out our um, parents in the end because... In the end, it's them who's going to have to take care of us if we don't work. Well, as you said that, I, I think um, I was hearing some time ago that, I um, can't remember exactly where uh, they're talking about it, but they want to make it the law, a part of the law that parents, especially parents who spend a lot on their children to educate them and send them to school and, you know, they, be, uh, they, be, they have, you know, good jobs, well-paying jobs, and these parents, because of the fact that they sacrifice to send their children to school, when they retire, they more or less live in poverty. They want to make it law so that these parents can sue these kids for compensation. You know, to, because, you know, they, um, you know they, they more or less put themselves into bankruptcy <laughs> for these kids to go to school to get a good education. And now they have a good education, they're making good money. The parents will have nothing because these parents can't work anymore. Let us suppose, let, okay, okay, I, I'm going to give a chance for the code. Let us suppose one of your daughter want to go to medical school. Uh, they don't have that um, amount of money to, um, to, to, to pay for that, you know, um, up front. They might be able to do a little job to, come, to help out. But most of that money, except if they go into debt, it would have to come from you and uh, Brother Cole. Ex yeah, I was saying, a lot of mistakes that we as parents make is that we see our children as our investment. Mm -hmm. And we look for returns when we are retired. That can't happen. Because mm -hmm. these kids have a life to live. They want to have their own family. And it's going to be hard for them to take care of their family and be taking care of you full time also. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, generations upon generations you know, a goal. That is how, especially from our culture, that is how we, um, we, we, we live. I know in this society, because of the different safety uh, nets that they have to support people, most parents, because for instance, in, in most of us here, our cases, um, our children won't, they won't have the need to really support us because after we, we, we um, retire, we have a pension that we're going to get. And, uh, Especially if you go back to the islands and you get in pension from here, you don't really need support from anybody. But it, it has some, some people uh, that whatever they are getting, it is too small to take care of them. And if they have children who are making good money, and especially they spend on these children to educate them, these children should count it as a blessing to help out their parents. You know, they should count it as a blessing to, uh, to help out their parents. You I, should I, not I, depend. Hold on, hold on. You should not depend on your kids to take care of you. Um, my parents teach me when when um, when we grow up, they're not gonna depend on us. Mm -hmm. When 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 we um go out and get a job, we're supposed to take care of ourselves. But you know, it is only be, it is only because of the way how this society is set up why we could say so now. Yeah, because but a lot of parents. They, they send their kids to school um, hoping that this kid will get a job yes. so that they could turn back and support them, which is not right. But no, yeah, it, it is. It depends. You see, yeah. what I'm saying, listen to what I'm saying. The reason why we're saying so now is because we live in this society that have all of these different things provided so when people retire, they could 
get this kind of support. Yeah. But when you, when you grow up or when you uh, in, in a place like St. Vincent and Grenada and all of these places where they don't have no big pension system set up in those places, you know, when you have a child who make it in life and you um, educate them and stuff like that, when you become old, you know, except if you really do well in life, you're going to need some assistance from your children. So you can't say that. And we are saying so because we live in here. We live in here, so we could say so now. But if we back there, you can't say that. Except if, if your parents was a teacher or a government employee or something like that, you can't really say that. Pastor, the, the point I'm making eh, is like people that are, people are have higher skills, like people that want maybe reach, get doctorate or bachelor's degree and they get a big job. But look, look at the picture there. These people that get themselves have these type of jobs. They tend to have ex, buy expensive things, you know. So even, even though they, like they have the job, they want the most expensive house, they want the most expensive car. So in other words, that their expense could be more. Right. So the, 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 hard, the hard paying job is the more expensive they have. Mm -hmm. So which means that you can't even send back to help their parents. But if, if they have something that is affordable where they could have excess money, which they could be able to support things. So most of these people they have a lot of problems. They have a lot of bills because the type of life they want to live. They have to support the life they live because of the education. But as I said before, if they have a job where, where, you know, where they could have excess money, you know, they could assist others. But the more, more, more education they have is more expensive than they have, and that's the problem. Well, uh, it, I think Sister Cole was saying that, um, you know, um, that is why we have to use wisdom. You know, we, we are living here, so we have to address the situation as living here, right? We have to use wisdom um, where our children is concerned, because... Children are not like children um, 25 years ago. They think a lot different. Um, in our time, uh, you know, those of us in my age group, when we're growing up, we love our parents and, you know, we'll do anything uh, for them. I know there are some children today who have that kind of mindset. But the majority of children today, especially in this society, don't have that kind of mindset where parents is concerned. You know, you have a million dollars and you put... Uh, $850,000 in their name, and they get that, you know, you retire, and you fall on hard times, what they'll do, they'll, you know, get you to sign over the, whatever remain, and they're going to put you in a home. Yeah. They're not going to say that, they're going to say, well, I'm going to take uh, dad, I'm going to take mom, I'm going to put them in the basement, I'm going to maybe hire somebody to watch them or whatever. They're not going to think about that. They're going to take you and put you into a home, and they may not even come and visit you a lot. So what, 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 what you have to do, what you have to do, you have to use wisdom. You can't take all what you have and just give it to these kids. If you, go, if you have some money and you're giving it to the kids, you have to use wisdom. You have to make up some paperwork. You have to make up some paperwork. You have $100,000 and you have intention to give it to the kids. You have to put it in writing uh, that this money has to be repaid. This money has to be repaid, you know, um, you know, or you could set it up in a way that um, at your debt, um, that will be the portion that they will get from the, from the inheritance. But you don't just take all this money and give it to them and give them the impression that you don't have to, they don't have to pay it back. Because you don't know what state you might find yourself in. Right. If I take all of my money and give it to my kids and then, you know, I passed away and leave my wife behind, What's going to happen to her? I got to leave some kind of cover and some kind of protection for her. So if you have anything and you want to give it to your kids, you have to use wisdom in the way that you give it to them. You could loan it to them, put it in writing, let it be there. They pay it back if they can. If they don't pay it back, when you become deceased and you have an estate, let it come out from that. that let that be the portion that they, got, they get, get in. But don't let it um, appear as if, well, you give it to them up front. Because if you end up in difficulty, it's crap. We're going to smoke your pipe. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I think we will have to. Yes. It's not going to work. Well, you see, because of the fact that we, we as parents, we, 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 have, we have a loving heart towards our, our children. I think there's a saying that says that, you know, you could, um, um, if you chop up 
a parents and you cook them and give it to a child. The, the, the child is going to eat it. <laughs> but if you, if you, if you cut up a, a child and give it to the parents, the parents are not going to eat it. That's the, that's, that's, the, that's the parent's child. So what you're saying there is right. But you see, although we take those tough stands at times, but when you look at your children and you see them struggling, and you know that you have a little bit that you can help them with, even though you make that kind of decision, you know, years before, you know, your, your, your heart does, can't, it, it can't allow you to, to, to see them struggling like that without helping them because of the fact that you, you love your parents. And that is what parents are supposed to do. Parents are supposed to love their children. You know, if you have something that you can share to help them out with, you're supposed to. But we're not supposed to um, have them sticking around and being lazy, you know, staying in the basement. And you have them there, they're staying in the apartment building and they're not contributing, they're not paying rent, they're not buying food, and, you know, they don't have no goal in life. They're just sticking there and they become like a leech off of you, like a parasite off of you. You know, um, if we have them at home, charge them rent. Let them pay a portion of the rent. If you don't want to take the rent, you take it and you put it in a bank account. So when they're ready to move out, you could say, well, listen, I have this money here. Take this and go. You know, it's your money. Take it and go. And, but you don't just have them there and you paying all the bills and you paying all the rent and these kids act as if they don't have no responsibility. And you might think that you're helping them. I'm being nice to my son. I'm being nice to my daughter. You're not helping them. What you are teach when you have your son at home, and you're not taking no money, you're not taking no rent, or you're taking a little bit, just a little pecans from them, and they have so much of money that they can waste and do things. When them do pick up a, a, a woman or a wife in their life, it's the same way they're going to live. Act as if, well, they don't, they don't, they're not accustomed to taking on responsibility. So when we train them now to take on responsibility, when they do have a family, it's not going to be anything strange to them. You know, praise the Lord. Uh, we're going to have to close there. Um, anybody have any final comment or question that you'd like to ask about something before we wrap it up? We have a lot to talk about uh, in these um, studies. Yeah, Pastor Duncan. Yes, sir. Um, you touched on racism earlier, and um, there's a study say that black people is the most racist set of people, right? Mm -hmm. Because if, 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 um, like a, a black person see another one striving, mm -hmm. they will hate them for that. Mm -hmm. And um, they, they say that the white people them hate the black people because of all the shooting that going on in the state. Right. They say black people is the most racist set of people because they, they hate their own brother, mm -hmm. which is, I think is true. You know, I think that is so true when they say black people is the most racist set of people because we hate we own. Well, uh, um... I don't know if we can really call it racist. What you're saying is true. What you're saying is true in the sense that if you're doing well, you know, a lot of people, they yes. look at you and they will, they will get upset about that. It's like what they said about, they said about the, the, the barrel with the crabs. You have a barrel and you have a, some crabs in a barrel. One will try to get up and, you know, as soon as he, he reaches to the top or almost reach to the top, one of those other crabs will try to pull him down. And I know that's, that's out there. But I think, I think, I think we, we, well, we should love one another. And there are black people out there who love black people. Yeah. But, you know, there are black people out there who are um, jealous towards other black people. Yeah, and, and it happens. Eh? And, and they, will, they will be right out amongst you, right? And mm -hmm. pretend that they are your friend. And they, they, you know? Well, you see, that's the reason why. That's the reason why. We have to use uh, wisdom. We have to use common sense. If you're doing well in life, it's not a good thing to take a, a, a blow horn and go around the neighborhood and blow it out. You know, even right in the church here, if you're doing well, you know, you don't have to come up here and uh, talk about it. Exactly. You know, don't do these kind of things because those uh, material things cause people to become jealous and become envious. And sometimes we create our own enemies because of the fact that we, we talk about things, you know, you invite people to come in your house and you show off. It, you remember, I think it was in the, um, in the Old Testament, there was one of those kings that invite the king of Babylon, I remember correctly, but invite the king of Babylon to come 
and he showed the king of Babylon all the wealth that he had in his house and all the things that he had, the gold that he had in the temple. In those days, the temple was the bank. And he showed the king of Babylon everything that he had, including all the gold in the temple. And you know what happened? God said to him, because he did that, the king of Babylon is going to come and take away everything that he had. So we, we, we have to use wisdom, you know. You, you, don't spill, you don't spill your guts about, you know, some of these things with people. Pardon? Well, it's jealousy. It's jealousy. When, racism is when you hate somebody because of the color of their skin and stuff like that, because of their race or their ethnicity. I don't think we hate each other because of our skin color. We, we, have, we have jealousy amongst ourselves. And uh, you see, that go, go, it goes right back to slavery. It's like, you know, during the time of slavery, when Master put a man like me in charge of the big house, and I know at the end of the day I could get a piece of food from the big house, you know, whatever I see you, Brother Lewis, you're my black brother, but you're out in the field. You know, any, any mistake you make out there in the field, I'm going to let Master know. You know? But I mean, um, when they say racism, they, they're talking about white supremacy, the superior race, and they say they are. That's well, you know, I know you have some black people out there who probably hate white people, but still, in general, I think black people, black folks love white people more than they love um, their own people. You know, look at what's going on down in the islands. When a white man comes down in the islands, everybody falls in love with him. Even though you don't have money, everybody loves him. Once he have that white color and that straight hair, everybody loves him. You can't do them nothing. You can't do them any, any harm. Everybody in love with them. And we, we lo- listen, it's true. We as black people, we love all other races of people. And it seems as though when it comes down to loving ourselves, loving our own people, that's where we find in the difficulty. And we're supposed to love, love all people but you, you, you don't hate your own people. You know, I don't really want to get into that because we had to talk about that later. And that's the reason why a lot of uh, our people, our black men, you know, they, they, they don't want to be with the black sisters. You know, because uh, it seems as though they're falling out of love with their black sisters. And, uh, you know, they're going out there and they, they, they're taking uh, people of other, other uh, races. You know, especially those of them when they make it in life, you know, they, 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 they're doing well in life. They figure that the, the, the black woman is not enough for them. The black, black woman is not uh, in their class. So they go out there and they get... Um, and that's the reason why, you see, that is the reason why that the, the black community will always be down and always be poor. Because every time somebody come up in life and has some money, instead of that money stay in the black community, it's gone. Because when, when I as a black man mar- become a millionaire and i married to a, a white person, after a while, the money that I have, if it survives, is going to be transformed, it's going to, be, it's going to move out from, from the black community, and it's going to go into the white community. That's how it's going to be. And I'm not, I'm not a racist person. I love people. I love uh, white people. But then I love black people too. You know, and I want to see my, my race of people, I want to see them come up. I don't want to see them down all the time. But all of the guys who have money, if you go on the internet and check out all of these black guys who have money and make it in life, every one of them have a white woman. <laughs> Almost. Almost. Anyway, we don't want to get into that. Let's close. Praise the Lord. All right. <laughs> all right. You know, um, some of these things that I'm saying, you know, some, some people might say, well, Pastor Duncan... Uh, as a pastor, you shouldn't be really saying these things. But this morning, when I um, look over my life, at the age that I am, I am right now, I think that I'm not, I'm not supposed to be afraid to say anything. I'm not supposed to be afraid to, to especially if it's things that are right. I don't, I don't have nothing to gain from ministry. I don't have anything to gain from ministry. If all of you guys decide to go right now, I mean, say I'll feel it, yes. But I'm not going to go and kill myself because the whole church decided to go because I speak the truth. You know, I don't have anything to gain from ministry. And I think that I reached to the, the stage, I reached to the age that I'm not supposed to compromise. I'm not supposed to put on 
a, 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 muscle, a, a, a muscle on my mouth when I have to say something that is right. And if I say something that is right and somebody want to take offense towards it, if it's something I need to apologize to, then I would apologize. But if it's something that I know is right, I'm going to say it again. I'll say it again. I'm not going to back off on it. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Lord bless us. We will pick up there next week, God's willing. Somebody ask God's blessing as we close. Merciful Father, we thank you so very much where we can come together as brothers and sisters in your courts, Lord, to discuss your word. I thank you for the pastor for putting all this information together. Lord, that you can really dispense it to us. And I pray all information that we're receiving here, Lord, that we're going to put it in this right perspective. Are we going to teach others not to offend others? Lord, teach us how to love each other, to be at peace, to be in harmony with each other. Lord, we pray, O oh God, as we continue to, to, to study your word, we pray, Heavenly Father, God, you're going to just give us enlightenment with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I help us, O oh God, to teach our neighbors and our brothers, pass the message on in the name of Jesus. Father God, as we continue to, reach to, a, as we continue to go to another phase, O oh God, in the service, we pray, Heavenly Father, that the Holy Spirit is going to be present in the name of Jesus, so that they continue to bless us here as we continue to worship you.